Well, we're here to celebrate the grand opening of the city dock, and I'd like to invite my colleagues on the city council to come up here and join me as we do this. Thank you. It's a team effort to pull this off, and I couldn't do it without all their hard work. So I want to say we're here today to celebrate six months of hard work, patience on the part of our residents, and dedication on behalf of our contractors who brought this in on schedule and under budget. So let's give them a round of applause. I'm also very grateful for the Department of Natural Resources and the generous grant that they gave us that allowed us to complete this project. We also created a beautiful backdrop that took into account the needs of our maritime industry and boaters. Let me explain. Additional mooring bits have been installed every six linear feet to allow for additional boats to tie up. The completed project also features a new seating area along the seed wall, a wider wooden area, which we're standing on now for better recreational space, and we've replaced the single space parking meters with multi-space kiosk so it makes it easier for people to park downtown. Other updates to our city dock include additional fire protection systems for the entire bulkhead, utilities including water and upgraded power pedestals, 700 linear feet of steel sheet pile bulkhead, and I appreciate everyone's patience while they install that. I went to a number of businesses and you can feel literally your entire body shaking while they did it. But the good news is you only have to do it once every 100 years, so we bit the bullet and got it out of the way. <laughs> Other things that were included were the additional bits and life safety mechanisms in an emergency. As I said earlier, we owe the Department of Natural Resources a huge debt of gratitude. Without their financial resources, we would not have been able to pull this off. So it's my honor to welcome to the microphone the DNR Secretary, Mark Belt. Good morning, everyone. My children tell me that today is Star Wars Day, so may the fourth be with you. Oh, <laughs> there's a Catholic back there. Right. So uh, I am Mark Belton, Secretary of the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, and uh, on behalf of my boss and our governor, Larry Hogan, I'd like to congratulate um, the city of Annapolis, Mayor Panelides, and the council um, on uh, the completion of this outstanding project. Located here in downtown Annapolis, the heart of Anne Arundel County, and home to our state capital, this multi-million dollar project exemplifies a successful local, state, and federal partnership in action. Through a combination of strategic local investment, funding from the state's Waterway Improvement Fund, and a record U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service boating infrastructure grant that the mayor referred to earlier, secured by the Department of Natural Resources, this project replaced a deteriorating bulkhead reconstructed piers, tie-ups, and slips. Enhancing and improving boating and water access is a top priority for the city, the county, and the state. And it is wonderful to see this project come to fruition just a few steps from the State House and just down the street from our headquarters building at the Department of Natural Resources. As you may already know, recreational boating represents almost $2 billion a year to the old line state's economy. Interestingly, there are more recreational boaters registered in Anne Arundel County than any other, any other county um, in Maryland. I believe the number is about 33,000. We recently had the honor to participate at the dedication of the Fort Smallwood Park boat ramp in Pasadena and are just delighted to be in Annapolis here today at the reopening of the city dock. Also known as Ego Alley, that's what we used to call it when I was a midshipman at the Naval Academy. Um, city dock is at the heart of activity for boaters, both staying and visiting our state capital, and is considered the most visited recreational boating port on the Chesapeake Bay. Since its founding in 1649, Annapolis has been an active port city and host to recreational and commercial boaters alike, along with sailing and racing fleets, which are responsible for a vibrant marine industry that fuels a major part of the service and tourism-related economies. Home to the Naval Academy, the National Sailing Center and Sailing Hall of Fame, and as hosts of the boat shows, Annapolis has a maritime tradition that is world-renowned and respected. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources is both honored and grateful to be part of this dynamic city, pleased to see this certified clean marina reopen, and we look forward to serving and protecting the boating community for many years to come. As boaters prepare for the season, we urge everyone to practice boating and water safety 
and encourage everyone to wear a properly fitted life jacket, just like Officer Bashir is here, or Bashir here in the back. Uh, that's why we have our natural resources boat here today to help promote water safety. Um, we've got National Boating Safety Week coming up at the end of this month, May 21st through the 27th. If you could help us pass that message on to all of your friends and family that you see coming out uh, in Annapolis here to use the water, we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you for your time and for inviting me here today. Before I bring up Lisa Greco, I want to acknowledge our Director of Public Works, David Gerald, for the outstanding job he did for finding and developing an outstanding working relationship with our contractors. Both are local firms and were part of the project from start to finish. David, would you like to come up here and say a few words? Thank you. Well, Rhonda told me to keep it really short and just to say two words, so obviously the, the two words are thank you, but I'm going to say a few more than that. First of all, I'd like to thank Lisa and myself. She did, and she's over here, she did a great job. Even when you have a great team like we did on this project, it still takes a lot of coordination uh, as the project manager to pull this all together. So she did a, an amazing job. I want to also personally thank Chinbro and EBA for the jobs that they did. EBA was our design engineer and our owner's rep, and Chinbro was our, our contractor. Great job by both. Lisa's going to talk more about that. I also want to thank the uh, downtown residents. The mayor mentioned this briefly, but, but there was a lot of vibration going on during this project when the, uh, the sheep piles were being driven. Uh, we appreciate the patience and the concern and the uh, uh, and the understanding as we went through this project. It, it, it was difficult and it was right during the dead of winter, so we appreciate that. We also appreciate uh, Alderman Budge, uh, El, Ellie Turney, and um, the, the Ward One Residents Association for all of their support and assistance to help us communicate this project. And finally, I would like to thank the uh, Harbor Master team for helping us with this. This is sort of their territory. And so they were very uh, helpful and, and uh, supportive through this project. So with that, I will introduce uh, Lisa Greco, the project manager for the uh, Department of Public Works. Thank you. First, I wanted to say just how honored I am for the opportunity I was given to manage this exciting and complex project for the city of Annapolis. From the beginning, we built on existing relationships that we had established with DNR during the Phase 1 project on the city dock that was completed in 2008, working with Carla Fleming and Don O'Neill. Carla worked with me closely, guiding me through grant requirements and reimbursement forms for the $1.5 million boating infrastructure grant that we received from our funding partners, DNR. Other returning players from the Phase 1 project are Charlie Kennedy and Jeff Evans, structural engineers who are with B EBA Engineering, which is the design firm. New to their design team is Kara Johnson, who was involved throughout the design phase and construction. Also, Deb Schwab was part of it, a local landscape architect. She helped us through the permitting process. Bill Stevens with SRBR was the uh, electrical engineer who d was responsible for all the utilities on the project, the water, the new power pedestals that you see, and the complete fire protection system for both phases one and two of the project. EBA also provided construction management services and inspection services for this project. Jim Wilson was the senior manager, but we didn't see too much of Jim after the second progress meeting because he left the day-to-day -day management in the very capable hands of Kyle Roof. Working closely with Kyle was Alex Kuryatnikov, a senior inspector, who recently won an on-the-spot award from EBA for his exceptional work on this project. Now to the heavy hitters of the team, Chinbro, led by Gabe Sloan, the project manager, and Aaron Downing, the project engineer. This was Chimbro's first project for the city of Annapolis. They were selected through a low bid process, and as we heard from the mayor, Chimbro was very successful on their project, completing it on time and under budget. From the beginning, at the pre-construction meeting, Gabe set the tone that this needed to be a team effort if we were all going to be successful. 
We committed to do our part, reviewing, responding, and approving items as quickly as possible to keep the schedule moving forward. And Chimbro, for their part, provided an A-team of workers from the crane operator, the superintendent, two foremen, carpenters, laborers, and divers. The project was not without its challenges, including the obvious short six-month schedule through the winter, the ever-changing tides which flooded the project area regularly, and contaminated soil that was discovered under the Donner lot which shut down this area of the uh, project for a while while we uh, tested the soil and selected a company to handle with the disposal of the um, soil. Throughout all of this, the team worked together to solve every problem that popped up during the course of the project, and there were many others. I would be remiss if I didn't mention how much we appreciated the patience, cooperation, and goodwill of the Ward 1 residents and business owners here around City Dock. They too are valuable members of this team. And so we stand here today with you to celebrate the success of a great partnership and the completion of a great public space that we hope the citizens of Annapolis and all who pass through this area will enjoy for many years to come. This time I'd like to... On behalf of the Ward 1 Residents Association, uh, who unfortunately couldn't have a representative here today, they wanted to especially thank Lisa for all of her efforts to coordinate with the local community. So thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite Eamon McGady, the General Manager of Infrastructure for Chimbro, for a few words. Thank you, Lisa. Mayor Panelides, Secretary Belton, Council Members, Director Gerald, distinguished guests. On behalf of the Chimbro Corporation, we want to express our sincere appreciation for the opportunity to work with you and your team to provide a beautiful new waterfront upgrade for the city of Annapolis. This project packs significant complexity within a small footprint, as we've heard, especially in light of the extremely aggressive schedule. In the end, it was a true team effort that delivered this project on time and most importantly, with an exceptional safety record. Special thanks to Lisa for her leadership and the close cooperation working with our project team and the EBA from start to finish, adeptly handling challenges we all faced in upgrading this iconic landmark. It especially gives me great pleasure to recognize Gabe, Aaron, and the more than 60 Chimbro team members and subcontractors who worked more than 25,000 work hours throughout the winter and the early part of this year to meet a demanding schedule. Without them, none of this would be possible. Our firm is proud to have such great people who work hard on the project and at the same time strive to be good neighbors and contribute to the community. This exemplary project is a proud testament to Chimbro's commitment to be the best in everything we do. Thank you again for the, being our partner throughout and we look forward to seeing this great facility continue to serve as a centerpiece and gathering area for all those who live, work, and visit this great city. Thanks again. And now we're going to cut the ribbon. If I could have everyone join me behind this. Here we go. Right. Well, thanks for